Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. Are there specific plants or crops that are net carbon sequesterers? Like they are going to end up putting more in than they take out at the end of the day? Okay. Uh, so that question, like, uh, like uh, the, the complexity behind it, it depends on if you, if you isolate a plant by itself without management associated with it is one story. If you manage, so the example that obviously comes natural would be a corn plant, right? You know, a corn versus a native uh, a sweet grass or a native a mix of native vegetation. Now, corn, if it is managed properly, can reach a significant amount of biomass that is accumulated, and it's still one of the king of the crops. It it, re, it sequesters more carbon that a forest at saturation because you will all, saturation meaning that has already growth, but even yearly when you accumulate the woods, what does the forest brings in terms of sequestering? The leaves, and then the leaves come. So that's to, to put it in numbers, a forest sequests about eight tons and a corn crop on average will be at least 20 tons. But is it a net? No, because corn uses fertilizer. And that, that goes down the drain already, the emissions and all the life cycle analysis, and we can go there. The perennials, we have, for example, one crop, Miscanthus gigantus. I don't know if you heard, it's one of the bio, new bioenergy cellulosic crop. The, the, the yield is 50 tons, okay, naturally. So no fertilizer. It fixes somehow, it just does independent. So, and the amount of roots and rhizobium that it accumulates is massive. So that will go, the problem with miscanthus is that can be an invasive species. And so DOE, the Department of Energy that has funded um, the bioenergy centers across, across the nations has almost allocated, University of Illinois is looking at miscanthus, Michigan State and University of Wisconsin are looking at switchgrass that has much more of a broad range of uh, possibility of growing, but switchgrass on average would accumulate about eight tons of, of biomass. So those are the natural behavior to answer your question. Yeah, big differences in plant. Wheat is five tons maximum, and half of that will be, you know, could be grains. And so I'm talking about in general, average total, um, and the primary productivity of that particular crop. But I want to spend a minute on saying that people may not realize that nowadays the level of photosynthesis done through two things, improved genetics and management, basically spoon feeding a crop, we have reached the level of yield of corn of 600 bushels. So the average national is 170 bushels and world record for the last four or five years has been in the range of close to uh, 580, 50, and, and 600, the last one, 615 actually, which when you convert it into total biomass, we're talking about now 50 uh, tons per hectare. But the amount of, that's very positive emitter because of the amount of, uh, uh, it doesn't accumulate carbon in uh, per se because of the balances through the amount of inputs that they are used. As I initially said, they go with agriculture being an anthropogenic uh, component to the climate is through fertilizer addition, we lose 50% of uh, the gr greenhouse gas emissions coming from agriculture come from N2O emissions. Okay. And so, that's another balance because even the potential of total accumulation of carbon is still requires nitrogen to go with it. There is a CN ratio. So you will always be depleted by nitrogen unless you have fertilizer. So if you want to fill all the soils with 5% in the globe, it will be equivalent to have 75% of the 
fertilizer production that we currently have in the world, which is really, really heavy sorts of emissions. Now, that doesn't mean that that fertilizer has to come from synthetic fertilizer. There are legumes that, that can be you know, produced. So if we want to come back to the species, yes, different species have different capacity, have different photosynthetic capacity and rates of accumulating carbon per unit area. The amount of this carbon, remember there is a component above the plant, but there is also roots. So there is this root shoot uh, composition that actually in situation where water is not available, roots become deeper. And so they, they, they basically the plants provide this feedback mechanisms of saying, okay, the root says, I'm ex uh, um, there is actually a simple way to think that if plants is exposed to a stress and the stress comes from above, what would be a stress coming from above? Reduced light, right? You know, shading from then the the all the synthetic and the, the assimilates will go to the top and the plants will try to go faster, you know, try to, 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 to elevate. If the stress comes from the soil, the, the soil gets the priority. The plant, the part of the plants in the soil. So if there is a water stress, plants doesn't grow higher, actually says, okay, no problem, I'm gonna invert and shuts down the photosynthesis. Some of the assimilates go down to the roots because remember it's not photosynthesizing but the roots are growing because they are desperately in search of water. And so you get more roots uh, that way. So this mechanism changes by species, but to, to again, to your uh, question, yes, different species, different capacity. And I made uh, a, a, a separation in the beginning depends how they manage. So if, if corn is managed with no fertilizer and it, it lets grow for so many years, it would be far from getting 600 bushels. You barely get 100, you know, 100 bushels at the end because you run out of uh, uh, the corn is a very highly consumptive crops because of the sizes. And it doesn't fix nitrogen on its own like, you know, miscanthus or so actually switchgrass does pretty well without fertilizer. So there is that mechanism that complicates even things. Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below.